Hello. Right. Another quick one today. Now, this is one a lot of you have been asking for. I think it's 10, 20, maybe even more comments about how I do clock and reset on Pam's new workout. So this is going to be a little demo patch in the palette case, just using the BIA, creating some mad baseline with just a standard four on the floor kick going on off screen. And it, hopefully it will demo the way I clock and reset this entire system. So let's start off with a, a little demo and you'll see what's going on. OK, so I'll start off by just describing how this is working. So generally I'm using output two for my standard clock and then I'm either using outputs one or five generally I'm using one but I'm going to demo both one and five today because they're two different ways of doing reset and I'll explain the difference between them now in the palette case I really like the fact that it's got this built-in malt that can be split into two so I generally have the clock on one side and the reset on the other so you can see pink is clock blue is reset so if you follow the pink cables you can see that I'm clocking Clep Diaz I'm clocking Mimetic Digitalis I'm also clocking Steppy here and then following the blue cables we're doing resets on here into the zero of uh, Mimetic Digitalis and also into the reset here of Clep Diaz and the purple cables resetting Steppy. These two black cables for the astute of you are, are going off screen and they're just clocking reset in a small sequence uh, uh, giving me a four on the floor kick. I could have put a kick on here but I didn't want to bring a kick into this case because it does take a while to um, modify Steppy and I've got this set up as I want it for a while now so I'm going to leave it as it is. So Let's start things off. Now, what you're going to see here is everything is clocked when I start. So you're going to see Mimetic moving. You're going to see Clep's clock start. But then when we click stop, you're going to see a reset pulse go out. And you're going to see this reset. You're going to see a reset light on Clep Diaz. And you would hope that Steppy would also reset just as Mimetic does. But it doesn't for some reason. I don't know why. It just doesn't. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's just start. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. When I press stop, you're going to see a pulse come here. You're going to see this reset. You're going to see a pulse here. But you're going to see Steppy stay in the middle. So watch where my finger is here. Instant reset. Kleppy didn't reset. It just happens to be on the last note, but if we keep doing it, there we go. We just stopped in the middle. But this is reset. This is reset. Like I said, I don't know why Steppy doesn't reset. If anyone knows, then let me know in the comments. Uh, but it just seems to stop. As soon as I press start, it resets. So maybe it has reset internally because it's certainly not getting a pulse when I press start to reset. So it could just be a visual thing. Right. The other way is in output one here. Now this will reset when I press start. So if I get this moving, and I stop hasn't initiated that reset you can see mimetic here is on step eight but as soon as i start it's going to send a, a reset into here here and here so we should just restart and we stay in time now this is the way i generally use it now the reason i generally use it this way is because if it sends it on start then it jumps back and plays the first note but if it sends it on stop when you press start, it then skips to the second note. So you'll hear a subtle difference. So if we get this playing now, switch the outputs and I'll just stop and then restart and you'll hear a different rhythm. That's actually jumped a different note. I think the downbeat is now one on. Anyway. Two different ways that you can do clock and reset. Uh, let's zoom into PAMS and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, we've zoomed in on PAMS now and let's go through how I set the resets because it's not immediately obvious from the manual how this works and I'd not, certainly not seen anything online on how to do it. So it was a bit of trial and error for me and I hope it's really helpful. Now, if you do find this helpful, then please like, comment, and if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I do try and put content out fairly regularly, so if you hit the bell notification, then you'll get notified. Um, if you're interested, I also have a reasonable back catalogue, so if you want to go and have a look back through any of my previous stuff, then feel free to have a browse. So, let's get started. So, if we go to channel uh, 2... I start on channel 2, so the modifier is times 4, so this is just how we get our clock. Let me go back to channel 1 here. Now let's start on five because we're already on five. Now five is saying that when we press this button, it will go from low to high. Now that's kind of counterintuitive because there's no pulse. When I press it, there's no pulse. I don't get a pulse until I press it a second time. So watch, no pulse. As soon as I press it, little pulse. Very strange, 
don't understand why. Probably something to do with the percentage size of the gate or something. I'm not sure. But that that's how it works to get a reset when we click stop. So how do we do it when we click start, which is actually the better way of doing it. So let's go back to output one. And it's quite simply that we just send a gate. It will just send one gate. And you can choose that gate length. When you press stop, nothing happens because they're already low. So this one's far more obvious. It's intuitive. You press the button, it goes high, it goes low, you get one gate. There we go, one gate. Nothing on stop, just on start. So how do we actually set this? So if you've got, a, if you've reset your PAMs and you're on standard uh, clock kind of multi modifiers here, all you do is press the encoder and you scroll through all your different clock divisions and just go past all of the multiples, pass off, passed on, and then the next one is gate. Uh, for the other method, if you just carry on, it's the next one, which is, I guess, a trigger from low to high. I'm not quite sure what that's called. If you know, let me know in the comments because I'm still learning. Um, I certainly don't know a lot about all the electronic side of it, but what I do know is a bit of trial and error and it does exactly what you want. So there you go. I hope that's been useful. If it has, please um, let me know in the comments. Um, if there's any other tips that people want or you've seen things that I do in my video that to me are obvious and I don't think they need explaining, but somebody else, they could be very useful. So let me know and I'll see you in the next one. And I'm just going to play this out.